Alrighty then, let's do this. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Grass Nectar in the house, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, it's very rainy and wet, but uh, I was able to line up a shrub trimming and weed removal uh, job just to keep busy, pay for this this monstrosity. I just have this on the um, trailer today, just uh, in case I have a little bit of time after the uh, shrub trimming job to power wash it, all right? So come along with me, let's get busy, let's clock in, and let's do work, all right? All right, what's going on YouTube, grass nectar in the house. Right here we got all this grass that I need to pull out, and then I'm gonna spray with some Roundup. All this, like grass, I don't know how I got there, but pulling all that out, making it look good, then uh, coming back with it and putting some Roundup on top of that. You know, all this, all these weeds, all the, everything that's on the flower beds, on the red mulch, I'm going to pull out. Just walking around here, doing the assessment of the property. super wet you can hear my footsteps squishing squishing and then uh, shape up these nine bushes there's a eight right there and then there's the ninth ones right Alabama here did, there was a story about a young kid and this young kid he did he did something in his life that was incredible and the thing that he did he said to his father one day man I want to make a difference and his father said so what do you want to do he said I want to bag groceries his father said, you want to make a difference, you want to bag groceries. He said, yeah, I want to bag groceries at this grocery store. I heard this lady speaking about the whole industry, and I want to be a part of it. So the father said, okay, I'll go up to the grocery store, see, can I get you a job? It'll probably be pretty easy to get you a job bagging groceries. So the father gets him a job, kid starts working, he's enjoying it. He comes home one night, and he says to his father, I really want to make an impact. Like, I want to make a difference. His father's like, what do you mean? You like, just shake the people's hand, tell them, great seeing you. The son said, no, I want to make an impact. And the father said, what do you have on your mind? He said, I want to write personal notes, and I want to put them in the bags. When they come through the line, I just want to put a personal note in the bag. Will you help me make copies? Father said, sure. And so one day, the manager came in the store, and the manager said, why is everybody in line eight? He said, somebody get on the intercom and tell them we have other aisles open. They got on the intercom, they said, don't you all know it's other aisles open? And they came down, they went to the line, they said, hey man, come, come to line six, we're open. And the people responded and said, no, we want to get little Johnny's word of the day. He became a part of their life. Like people started coming to the store just to get a loaf of bread when they didn't even need a loaf of bread. They wanted the word of the day more than they wanted the loaf of bread. But because he became a part of their life and they couldn't live without him, they would stop, they would get a stoplight away from the store and say, man, Johnny's the bagger. I gotta go and get his word of the day. And it started with, I just wanna make a difference. And he drove business to that grocery store by one simple act that people didn't value in the beginning. The best advice to a small business owner, or for that matter, to a large business owner, uh, is never stop thinking about how to delight your customer. Not to satisfy your customer, but to delight your customer. And when you wake up in the morning, start thinking about it. During the day, think about it. At night, think about it. And then dream about it. And no company's ever failed that, that had millions of delighted customers. And you start with them and you get them one at a time. There's no substitute for hard work. The best time you're ever going to have is when it starts out just you, and it'd be great if it grows into a wonderful, big, profitable company. But you're never going to be happier and more satisfied than you are 
in the first year or so of getting your business going because you do every single thing you sweep up when everybody goes home you're the first one in you plug in the coffee pot so when your people come in they have hot coffee and can get straight to work um, work through lunch set an example for them but there's no substitute for hard work people say luck yes but the harder you work the luckier you get my advice to a, a small business owner or any entrepreneur would be not to be discouraged if the business you end up with is not the one you started out uh, to, to pursue. Because so often you encounter difficulties, you encounter failures, and the important piece is to learn from each of those very quickly and to pivot and to move on to the idea that works. Of course you have to be close to your products, close to your customers, and think about them. That's the most important, but don't forget to think about your business, what your plans are, what you want to do next, how to take your business to the next level. Again, think about being in your business, but think about your business as well. My best advice is to really work hard to clarify what your purpose is and uh, be able to articulate that, be able to communicate it. Uh, in a simple sentence. And the reason that's important is as you bring people into your company, um, I think the most important question you ask them is, why are you here? Why do you want to join this company? And if you hear that purpose back, if you hear that passion around that purpose, it makes everything a whole lot easier. Any skill can be learned and taught, uh, but passion cannot. Being an entrepreneur can be a roller coaster ride at times. You will have great days, you will have not so great days. You may even from time to time have an awful day. You've got to stay focused and stay level-headed and keep your feet on the ground. Companies that uh, do well at some level, even though it may not be written down on a piece of paper, need to have kind of a clear strategy of why they're different, why they're adding value, why they're producing something special that customers need and that they're not getting now. So I, I think if there's a clear sense of strategy and you can get all the people aligned around that, then you get a lot more power than if you're just scrambling and working harder and harder uh, and, and, and without, without that clear direction. So that, that's my one piece of advice. Great culture, no matter where we are, no matter how big the organization, is not about intensity, it's about consistency. You can't get into shape by going to the gym for nine hours. It won't work. But if you work out every single day for 20 minutes, you will absolutely get into shape, right? Intensity is like going to the dentist. It's fixed in time, we know exactly what date we're going, we know how long we're gonna be there, and we know that when we come out, our teeth will feel smooth and look pearly. But if that's all we do, all our teeth will fall out. In other words, intensity is not enough. So we're also supposed to brush our teeth twice a day for two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening. What does brushing your teeth do for two minutes? Nothing. It does absolutely nothing unless you do it every single day. Can you leave out a day? Sure. How many days can you leave out? I don't really know. How many times do you have to brush your teeth before, before it works? I, I don't know that either. And this is why companies don't do it because we like intensity. We like things that are fixed in time and easily measured. We want to make leaders, what do we do? We have a company offsite, we invite a whole bunch of speakers, everybody gives the event an 8.5 leaders. No, no. We like intensity. How do we fix broken companies? Reorg, new management, aha. We can see the results, layoffs, we love it. Look at the savings, yeah, in the short term. We love intensity for the simple reason that it's easy to measure and we can calculate the day, we can calculate the time, highly predictable. But it's consistency that is the human part. You know, what does it take to fall in love? Buy her flowers, remember her birthday. Important, but if that's all you do, it won't work. It's the little things. 
Like when you wake up in the morning, you say good morning to her before you check your phone. <laughs> when you get up to get yourself a drink, you bring one back without asking if they even wanted one. Any one of those things does nothing. It's the accumulation of all of those things done over the course of time repeatedly that one day someone will wake up and go, oh my God, I love you. It's the exact same thing in a company, which is we do these things repeatedly, which is instead of waiting for Charlie to show up at the meeting who's running a few minutes late and we're all just on our phones waiting for Charlie, he's just running, is he here? Just a few more minutes, okay. Oh, Charlie's here, good, let's start the meeting. Instead, we should have no phones in conference rooms ever because you know what happens? We sit in the room and we talk, we go, I heard your mum's in the hospital. Oh yeah, thanks, no, she's much better. Thanks for asking, yeah, yeah. And that's called building relationships. What does it do? Nothing, it does nothing. But if you do it on a regular basis over the course of time, what ends up happening is you discover that you trust your colleagues, that you love your boss, that you believe to the core of your being that if something is wrong, that they will be there for you. What starts to happen is you start to be willing to be vulnerable. Vulnerable doesn't mean walking around crying, that's not what it means. What vulnerable means is I'm willing to raise my hand and say, I made a mistake. I'm not qualified for the job that you gave me. I don't know what I'm doing. Without any fear that by revealing those things will you be humiliated or fired. And here's the joke. It's good for business. Yo, what's going on YouTube? Grass in the house. Finished up the bushes. Looking good. Now I just have to... Um, weed around the property here's the other bush just have to weed around the property and i'll be all done but i'm not gonna make you guys uh watch me weed but um i'll show you a, a tour of uh when i'm all done all right Thank you so much for tuning in. This cleanup has been a blast, but I'll catch you in the next one.